Nick, let's start off by talking about how you got your start in the oil and gas industry. Yeah, so in, in terms of my start in the oil and gas industry, it wasn't something that it was, uh, I would say, necessarily planned. Our company, for years, uh, did a lot of work around sort of complex document management, and a lot of that was, was in oil and gas just by virtue of the fact that we were in Houston. And really, the deeper we dug into those problems, uh, I would say the more invested we became in oil and gas. The more clients we had, uh, the more we began, began to specialize in it. And from there, we really just doubled down uh, on those early efforts to, uh, to where we are today. a little bit about the path that you've taken to get to where you are today. I really tried to be opportunistic in terms of doing things that I really enjoyed and early in my career I worked in, uh, uh, in, in military and government uh, and ultimately made the complete transition over to the private sector uh, really as I started my 30s uh, and then from there I didn't have a set path to say hey I want to be the CEO of a software company uh, by this year or by X amount of time but I really tried to focus on doing things that I tremendously enjoyed and building a great team to do it with. And from there, it kind of led us to where we are today. And it's been a really enjoyable ride and, and I look forward to the future as well. And in that ride, talk to us about any challenges or risks maybe if you could share with us that you were able to overcome. Yeah, so, so I'd say, I, I, I think the biggest thing, uh, anytime you're trying to do something that's a little unconventional, unconventional or innovative is, is just trying to build the best team around you and with you that you possibly can. So. That is, there is no clear recipe to do that and do it well. So you have to be willing to experiment and iterate and really focusing, focus on getting people that are maybe a little bit beyond the reach of what you would expect today, that sort of thing for your organization. Really trying to recruit the best folks possible and then retain them and ensure that uh, their interests are tied to your interests, the company's interests, and the other way around to where you're personally invested in this thing together. Um, I, I think it's fair to say like there are very few things uh, really worth doing that you're going to do on your own and mm -hmm. so your ability to kind of form a form a coalition of uh, people that are just extraordinarily dedicated to what they do uh, much like you are is going to be the ultimate thing that, that really determines your success or failure so I, like for each challenge along the way I think that has been the key thing and actually getting past it is really it's not even one person but it's quite literally the team that uh, the team that tackles that problem together and in this time, technology is really a competitive space uh, that people are navigating through. Can you talk to us about uh, really moving through that as well? We don't tend to think of technology as, as technology for technology's sake. It's not, we don't go innovate simply to innovate, but I, I think the key for us has been to really try to fundamentally understand the problems that we're trying to solve through the eyes of our customers and then go out and diagnose what are the appropriate technologies to solve this problem and do it in a novel and interesting and hopefully extraordinarily effective kind of way. So uh, I would say if you look at our company, we're, we're not geeks just for the sake of being geeks, but we do some really interesting things to solve problems that we ultimately try to do our best to understand. And that's sort of the lens that we've looked at everything we've done through. And, and I, I think that's had a very good effect for our, uh, for our customers in terms of building very relevant technology for their business needs. Absolutely. Talk to us about any advice maybe that you have for younger professionals trying to navigate their way through. Yeah, I, I would say regardless of field, I, I think two of, the, two of the biggest things. Number one, get yourself on the best team you possibly can, right? And, and elevate the success of that team above all else. I, you know, people will take notice of that. Like if you do that, you do it well. Uh, and you're not just looking out for your own interests. People, number one, if you're, if you're on a good team, they are going to take notice of that and ultimately you'll be given more responsibility. And the number two, and kind of separate from that, in terms of your professional education, especially especially when you're young, but I'd say throughout your career, you should read a lot. Like, you should go out of your way to educate yourself, whether that's books or podcasts or whatever. Uh, I, I would say one of the most important things you can do is constantly be looking for new sources of information that really widen your perspective and give you additional context. I, I think that's an edge uh, that you absolutely have control over, uh, and it's an effort thing, right? And I think for people that do that, um, they are uh, much more likely to succeed in whatever their endeavor is than, than otherwise. And do you have any advice of, with the navigating work-home life balance? That can be a tricky question for many. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that, that is tricky. I, I, so I can, my answer is probably one that a lot of people disagree with, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot. So for me, like, it, it's, my work is very demanding, but I also really prioritize my family. So it, for me, at this stage of my life, like it is work or it is family. Like I don't really, uh, I don't really focus on having a ton of hobbies outside of that. Other than you know, family vacation, go skiing, that sort of thing. Things that I can do with my family 
because uh, the, the time uh, simply doesn't exist. And personal choice for me, but uh, taking that approach has allowed me to really put a, a ton of time into the work that I do, but I, I would say also a lot of time into, into really focusing on, uh, on, my, uh, on my wife and my son. Great. Well, we really appreciate you sharing our story and con your story, and congratulations on this honor yeah. as well. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nick. And for more on honorees like Nick, you can find that information on heartenergy.com.